So what should you expect as a cat two or cat three? Uh, you should get an additional set of calculations produced independently. Okay, regardless if it's cat two or cat three, you can't have a cat two check without someone doing their own calculations. It's, it's written down in black and white repeatedly. Ideally, you should use a different approach or different software. Um, not always possible, as I've said, but ideally, it's not a review of original calculations. The CAT3 check should not be full of caveats. Um, the CAT3 checker is signing off to say that they are happy with the design as shown. You can't do a CAT3 check and then fill it with so many caveats that it's worthless. That isn't a CAT3 check. It's just it's just nonsense, and you, we see that every now and again where someone does that and just put so many caveats in the check certificate that it makes no sense. The checker is saying they are satisfied with the design. That's it. There's no ifs, no buts. You are saying I'm satisfied with the design. If you're not, you shouldn't be signing the check certificate. The cat three check is not someone pr pr proposing another design. That is not the point in a cat three check. The design has been proposed the cat 3 checker is checking it they're not there to try and say oh why don't you do it like this it's too late any concerns or issues should be clearly identified through the document review notice um it should be dealt with amicably it's not a for want of a better description a pissing contest it should be professionals sitting down and discussing um or not discussing writing down in the drn what the issue is and if it proceeds to a meeting it's there to try and resolve the queries it's not to try and um, outdo each other twc should be involved with the review process um <clears throat> it may be necessary for designer and checker to discuss and formal records that should be maintained again calculations do not form part of design output though you will often be requested that they are delivered so as an example of what you were looking for at the end of this is our standard temporary works design and check certificate you should know who the designer is should be signed dated should refer to the drawings produced with a revision um loading constraints if they can be described easily put them in there if not it's just go and look at the drawings um proposed category of check we always put that on there <clears throat> because it might not necessarily agree with what the twc has said um but there you go, the codes we've used, other literature that's been referred to. And similarly for the design check, it should say what level of check's been undertaken, does it comply with the brief, and it should all be filled in and signed off. Exactly the same. Important thing to consider is uh, listing out the documents and drawings utilised, because these form A, it forms a record of what you've used in your design, and B, it allows the checker to understand the input information that they might need to look at in order to complete their check. <clears throat> 